how do we create our own alpha maps? Let's first go to Wikipedia because that's of course the best source. <laughs> and let's look at the definition of an alpha map. Alpha mapping is a technique in 3D computer graphics involving the use of texture mapping to design the amount of transparency slash translucency of an area in a certain object. So what does this mean? Essentially an alpha map is a uh, grayscale map so it goes from black all the way to white as you can see in all these images. So what do we see here? Well this is a plant. And if you look at these white lines, the, that is the geometry. So these are essentially just faces. And what this alpha map does, it, it hides or it makes certain parts transparent and certain parts non-transparent, as you can see. And with foliage in like a game engine, this can save you a lot of um, geometry. But let's go now to sculpting, because that is what we're going to talk about. With sculpting, we also use an alpha map. So what does this all have to do with sculpting? Well, a brush, so let's go to sculpting, go here, look at the brush, has the option to get a texture assigned to it. And this texture should be a uh, grayscale map if you want to texture with depth, and you can of course also put uh, color in here, but as we already know, an alpha map should be black or white. And what happens if we add a texture? So let's just choose one. Um, I'm just gonna choose these flowers here. So if I get a new texture in here, then I have to go to my texture properties and open that specific texture. So here, and I'm gonna open this texture. So now you can see what's happening. You can of course change the mapping, you can uh, make sure it doesn't repeat or does repeat but we can also go up here into your active tool and um, it didn't update yet now it's updated and you can uh, yeah sculpt on your geometry so let me sculpt on it and here we can see these flowers end up so what is happening well whatever is black in your grayscale map is essentially not being added to your depth, right, to your height details. And whatever is white will be added, as you can see here when you look at these flowers. So everything in between, that's why it's called a grayscale map, from black to white, has a certain amount of depth to it. So um, let's say this is a little bit less uh, white, a little bit more darker gray, let's say, then it will still be added in your height, but it will be less high than the other stuff. So now that you know how it kind of works, let's just grab a uh, normal image, this one. I'm just I'm just searching on uh, wood inside uh, Google, and I saved this image. It doesn't really matter what image you choose, uh, just make sure there is some difference between, um, yeah, like lighter and darker areas, and this really shows the cracks nicely. And then what you're going to do, you're going into Google, and you type normal map online. So click on the first result that you see, normal map online, github, and what you can see here is a very nice little program inside. So let me explain very quick what it does. If I turn this rotation off, we have a, a grayscale map in here. You can also just put images inside, so we have a, a, you can just put a color map inside. Now uh, what gets generated is a normal map, displacement, ambient occlusion, and a specular map. And from all of those, you get this result here in your 3D view. And yeah, that's all very nice. And if you guys want to, I can go more in depth into this. And there's also a program called Materialize, which looks a lot like this. And it's also free to use. So uh, let me know in the comments below if you want to have like a little tutorial on that. But what I want to do is I just want to put our image the old wood grain in here and here we can see that from this image we also get everything right so this looks really weird and this is mo mostly because we have so much noise in here and it's just uh, it's a bit overwhelming but do not worry about that we do not really need to look at that anyways because we're gonna play around with the emulator occlusion and the specular map 
Why do we do that? Well, that's because they are black and white, right? It's like they are grayscale maps. Displacement is as well, but you have don't have any options in here. So normal is has colors. We do not need it. Displacement doesn't have any like options in here to really change anything. Amir occlusion does, and we are gonna use Amir occlusion. The only reason why we use the Amir occlusion instead of the specular is because the Amir occlusion has one more. Uh, option which is the blur or sharp and why do we need the blur or sharp sometimes if you have too much noise it doesn't le look good anymore so sometimes i like to blur it a little bit out so what are we looking for here well we are looking for a nice uh, divide between the black and the whites right so i do not want too much noise in here so i'm go just gonna play around with my strength a little bit the mean and the range and as you can see if you put it very sharp you get all this noise we do not want that so make sure you blur it a little bit out and something like this would already be good now you can name this so we can just do um, wood alpha you can download it and what you do with this download, you go into Blender. Let's start a whole new Blender file. And now that we are in Blender, let's make sure we can actually sculpt on this cube. So I'm going to select it, go into tab and subdivide it a few times with W here. Now we're going to use a multi resolution and um, that's kind of the downside of this. If you really want that sharp and nice of a detail, you really need to go uh, quite high in your subdivisions. Which, to be honest, Blender is not the best at. If you compare it to ZBrush, it's of course uh, not comparable. But that's totally fine. We can still get some nice results. Now I like to smooth this also out. So W and Shade Smooth. And we can go into our sculpting section. Here. So... There are some things that I want to talk about. The first thing is our uh, brush which we're going to use. Our draw brush, if you look here, has a very recognizable form. But it might not be the best to put an alpha on there. Just because it gets very thick in the middle and you kind of want the alpha to be almost flat, let's say. So I personally like to use our clay brush a little bit more. As you can see, it is way more flat so the detail will not be... Uh, thick in the middle and then a very uh, non-thick in like the, the, the outer sides. So let's just go to another side here and we're gonna look at our texture. So we're gonna add a new texture in here, go to your textures properties and we can open our just downloaded file. Here we have our alpha, open image, very very cool. So let's go back to our active tool and here we can literally just brush on our detail. So there are multiple things that I want to talk about here. Uh, first of all, you probably want to put your strength a little bit down and your radius a little bit up. And here we have uh, some nice detail when I just uh, sculpt around. The only thing is that the detail that we are getting uh, might not be sharp enough. So you can see that we do have some uh, nice lines in here, but you might want it a little bit more sharp. You could change your alpha map, that is totally valid. You can also go into your textures properties, go uh, down into the... Go down here into colors, and you can change the contrast a little bit. So you can put the contrast a little bit up, and you can also play around with the uh, brightness if you want. So now uh, the contrast has changed a little bit and we can see that we have a little bit more of a divide between um, yeah, these cracks in here. So one more thing and that will be the mapping here in your brush. Normally it's set to tiled. I personally do not really like tiled. I would rather go with uh, maybe area plane. But let me also talk about the stencil. When you have stencil, it... Um, ends up here it's very hard to see right now because I made uh, the contrast very high let me put this contrast a bit back just so we can see my stencil and here we can see it and what do we do with the stencil 
we can just move it around. If you uh, right click on it, you can move it around wherever you want in your scene. With control, you can actually rotate it around. So hold control and then just uh, right click and move it around. And with shift, you can scale it up or down. Okay. So now we can literally just paint on here and our detail, which we can see, will be added. So let me paint on here. And we can see that our detail gets added there. So if I go out of here, you can see all of the detail. So as last, let me put up my subdivision one more time and make it look really, really nice and crisp. Um, we're going to do this bottom side here. And I'm just going to paint over here very nicely. And let's hide it. And here we can see all of this amazing detail. So it's really, really handy to do this. You can really get some very nice quality high poly from this. I hope you guys learned from it. And I would really like to see what you guys done with it. So um, please subscribe, like if you learned something. And uh, comment down below if you want to learn something else. Just let me know. Um, yeah, see you guys.